Today's show is sponsored by the MultiorgasmicMama.com. If lack of confidence, low libido, or guilt and shame around your sexuality are the cause of your bedroom woes, you know, the hot wild sex you never have anymore, or the transition into motherhood that sucked your libido dry, let me help you get your mojo and magnetic feminine spark back. Magic, miracles, total self-love, and multi-orgasmic bliss included. See you at the MultiorgasmicMama.com. Hello, lovely people. Thank you so much for joining me here today to talk to you about breaking out of limiting sexual fantasies. The first thing I want to tell you about sexual fantasies is that they are completely normal to have. Everyone has them and everyone will continue to have them. But what's happening is that most of us are asking the question, is it good or bad to have sexual fantasies when what we should really be asking is, are my sexual fantasies limiting my experience of sex? I've had a few people reach out to me recently asking me if having sexual fantasies are bad. And what I want to tell them and you is that having them is absolutely not bad, my dear. All humans are going to have fantasies and they're totally normal and okay. So let's all just quit judging the fantasies and normalize this behavior because the truth is we all have them and it is absolutely normal to continue to do so. In fact, fantasies can be a beautiful part of your sexual experiences and it can be super fun to be able to act out some of your fantasies with your partner. However, many people experience fantasizing about things that they feel very uncomfortable with, uh, like something that they would never want to experience in real life. Or they return to a fantasy that doesn't feel good inside, but they need this fantasy in order to experience pleasure. And this is where sexual fantasies can become limiting and keep people from experiencing what they really want to experience in sex. Sometimes even the fantasy can become an addictive pattern to not be present in your own sexuality. And this is the only reason a sexual fantasy might not be quote unquote good because having a dysfunctional and addictive sexual fantasy that limits your sexuality and your expression and makes you feel icky and dirty inside can really eat away at you. And if you spend a lot of time sexually fantasizing, I just want you to recognize and know that most people do this and it's totally normal. But it's also great to recognize that fantasies can work to keep you out of your body and sexual experiences and keep you from feeling what you want to feel and experiencing what you want to experience. And there are two reasons for this. I'm going to dive deep into this first one. The first reason that this happens is based on the simple neurobiological principle that neurons that wire together, fire together. I'm so excited that I actually get to use my biochem background in my work as a sex coach. (laughs) Yes, for all of you that don't know, I have a biology and a chemistry degree, and my favorite class in all of my undergrad studies was biochemistry. Okay, now I want you to think back to when you were having your first sexual experiences as a kid or a young teenager. And think about what you were thinking about then. Think about when you first discovered pleasure and orgasm. And what if your first sexual experience was traumatic or maybe was an assault? And if that's you, I just wanted to say that I have so much compassion for people whose first sexual experiences were traumatic because a lot of times when you're working with trauma victims, you're going to continue to seek out partners who assault them and no one gets why. It's super confusing. This is because their brain doesn't care if the experience was good or bad. It just cares if it knows that it can survive an experience or not. And so many people have shame around rape fantasies or the fact that they may have been raped and it was pleasurable or even orgasmic. And there's seriously nothing wrong with anyone who's experienced pleasure through these things, but that obviously does not make it right or okay. So if you know someone who has, or maybe even you are someone who's been sexually abused and they go back 
time and time again to partners that are abusive or fantasies even that don't feel good and they'd never want to experience them in real life. It's because their brain knows that it can survive the abuse or the fantasy and that's all it cares about. <laughs> Your brain is very smart and very wonderful at keeping you alive. It doesn't know, however, that it can survive a truly healthy, holistic sexual experience if it's never experienced that before. And that's why it can be so scary for trauma victims to even be in healthy, loving relationships because their brain literally registers this healthy experience as, I'm not comfortable here. I'm not sure this is safe because we're not used to this and we're not sure that we can even survive this. It's the same with sexual fantasies, okay? If your brain gets wired in one way and you repeat this pattern over and over, you're reinforcing and giving positive feedback to your brain that this is how we achieve orgasm and this is how we feel pleasure. Even if it doesn't make you feel good inside or even if it's limiting your sexual experiences, the thing here is that those neurons that wired together will continue to fire together whatever your brain has associated with sexual pleasure. It will keep cycling in this loop even when you become an adult, even through the years, and even if you never want to experience it in real life again, even if it makes you feel dirty inside. Okay, This creates a split sexual desire within because there's one conscious part of you that wants to break out of the fantasy, that wants to break out of this loop and this cycle, and then there's the brain's fantasy imprint that makes it easy to go to. The best thing that you can do to break out of a dysfunctional and addictive fantasy is actually to try and not push it away or to shame it because doing so only makes it stronger and have a bigger hold on your psyche. What's helpful instead is to recognize the emotion or the sensation that your brain has associated with sexual pleasure or orga orgasm and to eventually uncouple the emotion or the sensation from pleasure and orgasm and then reassociate pleasure and orgasm with something else. And that can be whatever you choose. It's all about having a choice and laying down new options for your brain to experience pleasure and orgasm. You're literally creating new neural pathways in your brain to reach pleasure and orgasm in a way that does feel good, in a way that is holistic, in a way that is healthy. Now, the second reason that we can get stuck in dysfunctional and addictive sexual fantasies is because deep down, we have a fear of experiencing something. This is because many of us were more or less trained to not experience the fullness of our sexuality. We were culturally conditioned or religiously shamed that we should be afraid of our sexuality or our pleasure. And God forbid that you have lust or desire as a horny teenager in your prime. Now, you may have unconsciously been using an addictive fantasy to try and protect yourself from experiencing the things that you thought were wrong to experience. Super interesting, right? Well, the way to work around this one is to ask yourself, what am I trying not to feel? Are you trying not to feel pleasure? Are you trying not to feel your lusty desire? What else is it that you're trying not to feel? If you can see how your psyche is trying to protect you from feeling this thing that you judge, you can learn to embrace the thing that you unconsciously don't want to feel and cut the addictive attraction to the fantasy and break out of the cycle. So how do you do that? It's probably what you're going to ask me now. Well, that's a great question. This is where the foundation of holistic sex comes in. Well, when I say this word, people are like, what the fuck is that? Holistic sexuality is about how you experience sex on the inside. Does it feel good? Is it pleasurable? Can you be fully present? It's not just about how you have sex. It's about the emotional, the psychological health, your inner state of balance and feeling really good and vibrant inside. How can you relate and connect intimately with other humans? Can you be super present and open your heart? The way that you relate to your own body and sexuality is how you relate to your own life and with others. And what allows us to create a foundation of sexual health are the four foundations of holistic sex, which are breath, sound, movement, and focus. And there are other uh, holistic sex tools, but those are four 
that are super foundational to you experiencing uh, sexual health. And you can work with these just like you work with, you know, your body and staying healthy. And the best way to do this is through a conscious self-pleasure practice. And again, that's something that people are a little bit like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> okay, a conscious self-pleasure practice. I want you to think of an athlete who goes and trains to run a race, okay? Do they work on and train for the race while they're having the race? No, they do not. They work on and train for it in their training and practices, <laughs> not in the actual race itself. The same concept is with sexual training and sexual health. Do you work on being sexually healthy and able to experience what you want to experience while you're actually having sex with a partner? No, you don't. You can, but it's best when you actually work on it yourself and then bring what you have learned into the sexual experience itself. So the way that you self-pleasure, therefore, is key for breaking out of dysfunctional, addictive fantasies for two reasons. The first is that your self-pleasure practice is a predominant space where people wire their sexuality, okay? Again, if you go back to when you were first being imprinted around your sexual experiences and pleasure, uh, those neurons that wired together fired together. So whatever you were experiencing, your brain was getting coded and it was associating pleasure and turn on with whatever you were thinking, feeling, or doing at the time. Going in and giving you all the new tools with which to self-pleasure supports you to rewire your brain. And one thing that I see that keeps people from really getting into this is because people think that because sex is natural, why should I have to work on it? Why should I have to do anything about it? But if you think about, you know, your own personal health and wellness as a whole human, like if you don't ever focus on what you eat or paying attention to how much you're exercising, do you really expect yourself to be healthy through the years if you're not paying attention to any of that? No, you can't expect yourself to be healthy. Well, this is the same thing with your sexuality. Even though we think that, you know, our sexuality is natural and if it's just not working out for us, then maybe we just shouldn't be with that person. That's usually not the case. And a lot of people break up, get divorced, and lose really ideal relationship partners simply because they think that because it's not working out, then you know that's it, that they don't have they don't need to do anything or that they even can do anything to keep it together. So this idea that you can transform your sexuality and develop it and train yourself to experience what you want to experience can be super empowering to stay sexually healthy through the years. Now, the second reason the way we learn to self-pleasure is so important in creating a holistic, uh, healthy sexuality so that we're not um, addicted to fantasies is that we learn to own our sexual pleasure. And this one is so key for women because if and likely you were not taught to celebrate your sexuality or to cultivate a healthy uh, self-pleasure practice. Probably you were ashamed for it. Probably you were caught and you never wanted to do it again. Uh, then it becomes easy to project anything that goes on good in our sex lives onto our partners. It becomes super easy to give them credit for making us feel good inside. Uh, to give our lovers all of the credit, and then we become dependent on them. And since sexual pleasure is a core need, it makes us way more attached to our sexual partners than we probably should be, or that's probably even healthy to be. If you have a codependent relationship, I would really take a look at how much are you making your partner responsible for your own sexual needs and health. Owning our sexual health and having a strong sexual Conscious self-pleasure practice is key for also uh, retaining our independence and our vibrancy and to relate to our partners in a healthy way and not become addicted to them for how they make us feel. Instead, taking ownership of like, I can make myself feel however I want to feel just by going and doing my own practice. It can be empowering. It can make you feel like super exquisite and ecstatic on your own. Like you don't have to be dependent on someone else for that. So creating this conscious self-pleasure practice and is the space that you can undo and break out of 
limiting sexual fantasies. So creating a conscious self-pleasure practice is exactly how you can break out of limiting sexual fantasies. And if this is something that you're really struggling with, I just want you to know that it's normal. It happens. You're not the only person out there listening to this podcast today. I absolutely guarantee you, you're not the only person who has struggled with this, who is struggling with this. And if it is something that you're really wanting to work on now and wanting to transform and to change, then I encourage you to head over to the multiorgasmicmama.com and you can sign up for my weekly emails and reply to any email that you get from me and let's chat about it. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will talk to you all next week. Bye-bye.